Hi everybody, Evan here. Welcome to week 12. Uh, we're now through most of the meat of what you are all going to cover in JavaScript. Uh, the next couple of weeks are really going to be about, you are going to learn a couple new things, but quite a bit of the time is going to be spent exercising a lot of what you already know um, in some different applications. It's important that you code along with these videos. It's important that you use these videos as a springboard for your own more ambitious explorations. It's important that you don't stop with what I'm going to show you. Okay, but we do have a couple of things which we will we will be going over each week, but quite a bit of it will be exercises or challenges for you to stretch the muscles that you've been working on for the past several months at this point. So before we get into any projects like that or any new exercises, uh, there are a couple things that I'd like to review. One of them is array methods. I want to be sure that everybody is confident in array methods moving forward as they're extremely important and they're a very good segue into what we'll be going over next which are string methods. Now once again if you feel the need to explore on your own or in the process of working on exercises and projects you're, you want to figure out how to learn more about array methods or string methods do not forget that there are always the MDN web docs and the Mozilla Developer Network web docs developer.mozilla.org where you can in fact find quite a bit about these methods. If I search for arrays <clears throat> and I pull up, let's try the very first very first search query and down here let's find JavaScript array, here we go so this is for the global objects array. So back to the beginning, I search for arrays. The very second search result ends in global objects forward slash array. So that's what we want to look for. This is a really excellent place to come to find all about array methods. You see here on the left in this sidebar, underneath properties, where we see array.length, we're all familiar with array.length by this point, underneath properties, there's a whole section on methods. A lot of these you may not recognize, uh, but a lot of these you should, like pop and push and reverse. I don't want you to get confused by the fact that these methods are <clears throat> preceded by dot prototype. We did spend some time exploring dot prototype, but all these all that dot prototype means or indicates is that these methods are available on the array prototype. In other words, these methods are available to any array under the sun. Any array you could ever possibly make, as long as it its data type is an array. Slice, shift, reverse, reduce, write, reduce, push, pop, mat, last index of, these are all methods available to that array. Okay? The same obviously goes for strings if you choose to search for strings in the Mozilla, Mozilla Developer Network web docs or regular global objects, any kind of data type imaginable. It's a great resource and if you haven't found yourself using it very much yet, I encourage you to try to dive a little deeper with it. So, array methods. Without looking at the Mozilla Developer Network, I'm going to create an array of strings here. My strings. Hello. My name is and Evan. So we have an array of one, two, three, four, five strings. If I save this, reload my page, open my console, and I check my variable, looks good. Looks good. So what are the array methods that we learned? Well, we learned dot push, 
that is how we add a new item to an array. So if I execute this code here, and then inspect my string contains six items. That new item has been added onto the end of my array. And you'll notice the dot push method returned this number six. That's the new length of the array after this new item has been added. We went from a length of five to a length of six. Okay, so dot push adds a new item and returns the length of the new array. Pretty straightforward. Then we learned dot pop. Dot pop actually removes the final item in an array. It removes the final item in an array and returns that item which it removed. That's dot pop. Other methods that we learned. My string dot shift. That removed the very first item in an array. Dot shift removed the first item in an array. And it returned that item which was removed. And finally, my string dot unshift. Hello in all caps, it returned a number, and what it did is added that argument, that hello in all caps, to the very beginning of an array. So dot unshift is used to add a new item to the very beginning of an array. Dot push adds an item to the very end of an array. Both push and unshift return the new updated length of the array dot shift removes an item from the beginning of an array and dot pop removes an item from the end of an array. Both of those methods return the item which was removed. So here's a question. How could you in one line of code swap the very first and last item of an array? Actually, I'm not even sure if it's possible in one line of code. I can definitely do it in two. My string dot push, my string dot unshift was a perfectly fine example of how you could actually s pull that very last item in an array and slide it into the beginning. So what happens if I run a for loop? Bar i equals zero. i is less than my string dot length plus plus if we execute each time my string dot unshift my string dot pop console.log my string what actually happened is it looped all the way through. It switched Evan to the beginning, then it switched is to the beginning, name to the beginning, my to the beginning, finally hello, which at that point was at the end, to the beginning. So if we console log my string each time through the loop, we'll see it go full circle. Just a cool little trick there but something to bear in mind that you can combine these array methods. The same applies to string methods and it's, it's even more important for string methods which is why I'm showing you how this logic works now. Alright, 